Hey guys, I just finished doing some work on my uh, generator. I was going to put it away for some long-term storage, and by that I mean still starting it every month or two. But uh, I figured I'd show you the two ways you can turn off your generator for proper storage so that it starts on the first or second pull every single time. Let's get to it. All right, guys, I'm going to violate protocol and run this unit in the garage. I do have a cross breeze and everything, but I'm just turning it on and turning it off, so it's not going to be any great amount of carbon monoxide here, but I have neighbors out on both sides. It's the first real nice day that we've had in the spring, so don't want to bother them with the generator and be talking to myself to my phone, so to speak. So let's get right to it. So we're going to start this up. Uh, the first method is you're going to need um, a 10 millimeter wrench or socket because we're going to have to drain some gas, but I'll show you that this is probably the fastest way um, if you have the tools and everything. But if not, then I'll show you the other method if you don't have a 10 millimeter wrench or socket so that you can still accomplish the same effect. So that's method one where you just turn off the uh, start switch. So the kill switch, however you want to call it. And next, we need to drain the carburetor bowl. So let's turn off the fuel valve. Yours might be located right under your tank, but the fuel shut off. So it's this bottom one. It'll have an indicator like that. Turn it against the arrow and that'll cut the fuel off to the carburetor. And what we really want to accomplish here for long-term storage is draining uh, as much of the fuel lines and the um, carburetor of gasoline because when gas sits, it oxidizes. Even if it's treated over time, you just still want to minimize the risk. But if you have gas in here filling up the bowl up to a certain point, it'll start clogging up that main jet, the distribution tube and everything. And it also, when you have gas in the bowl, it pushes the float up, which pushes the rubber tipped needle up into the seat. And that tip will get deformed over time if it's got constant pressure on it. So we want to relieve that pressure by um, draining the gasoline out of the carburetor. All right, we have a 10 millimeter uh, ratchet and socket. And we have a clean, small jar, because there's not going to be that much gasoline in here. And always leave your drain plug, if your carburetor has one, uh, exposed so you can access it. If it was internal here, I wouldn't be able to get to it. And make sure the ratchet is turned the right way. Break the seal on that. You can usually just do the rest by hand. But you're going to drain out the gas out of the carburetor. Shouldn't be that much. I'll even tip the generator a little if I can. Get as much gas out of there as possible. Shake it around a little bit. Just want to get that out so it doesn't gum up your lines. And I just cleaned this jar out so I know this is good. You can always check your gas, make sure there's no um, water or anything in there if you weren't sure about the quality of your fuel. This is brand new fuel, so I'll dump that right back. Dump that right back up into the gas tank. Since the fuel shutoff valve is turned off, there's going to be no more gas going to the carburetor. Put the drain plug back in there. Start threading it by hand to make sure you don't start to strip it. Give it a good solid tightening with the just firm, a little bit tight. Maybe a little eighth of a turn after it gets firm. And then you're all set. This is good for long-term storage. Just make sure to start this up about every month or two. Run it for... 15 minutes or so, put a load on it for a couple minutes, and you'll be good. You'll keep that residual magnetism in the generator side, the part that actually produces power. You'll keep the residual magnetism good by doing that. If you let it go too long without running anything, that can run out of that residual magnetism, and your engine might start right up, but you won't be able to uh, power anything up with it. And careful, touching the muffler. This is barely warm because I just ran it for a second, but something to be cautious of. Okay guys, method number two. If you don't have a ratchet or a wrench to um, take the drain plug out of the carburetor, you can accomplish the same thing. Let's start this back up, turn on the uh, fuel valve so fuel is now flowing to the carburetor bowl. And then we'll turn it to half choke again for a second. Turn the engine start switch on. And then we'll give it a pull. And what I'm gonna do for method number two is simply cut off the fuel supply while it's running. 
and the generator will eventually stall out. It's going to use up whatever gas it can in the fuel lines. It'll use up um, the gas that's remaining in the carburetor bowl. And then when it gets to where I can hear it starting to run lean, I'll actually close the choke from open to half. And you can go so far as to move it all the way over as it, as it dies further and further. But I usually just close it about half choke. That'll restrict the air. It'll suck up any more residual gas from the carburetor bowl. And then once it stalls out, uh, you're good to go. This is good for long-term storage. It accomplishes the same effect. So let's go through that right now. And that's how you get this prepped for long-term storage. If you just want to do this method, it'll take you know two, three minutes to stall out, but just kill the fuel line and you're good to go. Um, you can turn the engine start switch off just for safety's sake. But other than that, you are all set. And just to test it, let's see how much fuel comes out of the carburetor bowl. Ratchet's breaking on me. No catch, there we go. Oh, there's going to be a dash. It's at the very bottom. Actually, nothing. So there's going to be a little bit in the sediment bowl, which is a little lower than the uh, drain screw. Other than that, good to go. Nothing in there. Well, guys, thanks for checking out this video. I hope it helped you out. Uh, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave any comments below if you have a different way of doing things. Uh, feel free to check out my website, homebatterybank.com, where we cover generators, inverters, um, battery backup systems, and uh, power outages in general. So have a good day. Thanks for watching.